This movie is number four in a series of five that demonstrate the basic use of FME Desktop as a tool for data translation and transformation. Each movie covers the content from one chapter of the FME Desktop tutorial. This movie covers basic methods for transforming the content of spatial data, again while it is being converted from one format to another. Transforming data content allows an FME user to progress beyond simple translations and restructuring and actually add significant value to data produced for an end user. Data transformation is the ability to manipulate data during format translation to create, delete, or modify the spatial information or its attribute components. Common content transformations are concatenating or splitting attribute values, calculating new attribute values from a spatial operation, clipping spatial data to a predefined boundary, and snapping vertices to close gaps in features. The single example in this movie demonstrates a number of different transformations and uses techniques designed to create efficient and productive FME workspaces. It also shows how to introduce more than one format of source data to a workspace. The scenario for the example is an FME user in the planning department of a city, working with a data set containing city parks. The person has been tasked with creating data suitable for analysis for grounds maintenance. By this we mean that the end user wants to know the area of grass to cut in each park and the length of stream bank to be maintained. This example includes the important part of carrying out the required measurements and fitting them into a predefined output schema as the final step in the project. Here I've already started FME Workbench. This example continues to develop the workspace from the data restructuring chapter. Because I've worked in it already, I can open it from the list of previous workspaces in the start screen. Notice the workspace had already been developed from a simple format translation by restructuring the data. For example, attributes have been created on the writer schema to store the measurements we are about to create. The first task is to calculate the area of an incoming park feature. This can be done with an area calculator transformer. Calculator is a term used for transformers that compute new attribute values. I can add an area calculator using quick add. I click on the connection where I want the transformer and start typing the name of the transformer. When it appears in the list, I select to place it. Notice that the attribute created by the area calculator is called underscore area. This is the default setting and the yellow icon confirms the default is being used. The problem is this isn't mapping properly to my destination schema. I can manually drag a connection, but there has to be a better way. By using a parameters dialog I can change the default attribute name from underscore area to park size. This way it matches the required attributes, and when I click OK, the attribute mapping is automatically carried right through to the right of feature type. The next transformation is to calculate the length of stream that passes through each park. Because stream information is held in a separate data set, it's necessary to add a new reader to the workspace. To add a new reader is simple enough. Here I select the Add Reader command from the menu and specify what the data is to be read and what format it is. Now when I click OK, a feature type representing the hydrographic layer is added to the canvas. So now the workspace reads a set of hydrographic features, but they cover the entire city and I've got to clip them to the extents of each park. This can be done with a clipper transformer. This time it's easier to place a clipper transformer and then connect it manually. It's placed with quick add again and connected in by drawing in manual connections. The streams are the features to be clipped, the clippees, while the parks are actually the clip boundaries or clippers. A yellow icon signifies parameters that need to be checked. Here the important part is the clipper type parameter. I need to specify that there are multiple clippers. Now I can click OK to accept these parameters. Having clipped the streams, a length calculator can now be added again using quick add to calculate stream length. Notice that a transformer can be added on to an output port by clicking on that port first. Now the length of each stream is calculated but that information needs to be merged onto the park features so we know what stream exists per park. This is done using an overlayer transformer in this case the line on area overlayer. I add it with quick add 
and make more manual connections. The streams are the line features and the parks are the area features. There the transformers connected up, now the parameters should be verified. One of the parameters is marked list name. A list is a special FME attribute type for holding multiple values per attribute. In our scenario there might be multiple streams per park, hence there will be multiple values. So we'll use a list like this. If the workspace were run at this point, the output would look like this. See that when a feature is queried there is now a list of stream lengths. These need to be added together in the workspace to give the total stream bank. This can be done in Workbench with a transformer called a list summer. A list summer transformer can be placed onto the area port like this. Now the parameters ask us which attribute to add up, and I choose the list version of length. In other words, this transformer will sum up the values for each length of stream. Since this is a final attribute, I'll map it to the writer schema by renaming it to stream edge. Now I need to do a bit of more connecting and a bit tidying of the workspace, after which it will look something like this. Now the workspace can be saved again, and then run. Once complete, I can inspect the output and ensure that each park has a value for park, size and stream edge. This information will let the planning department calculate grounds maintenance costs for the coming year. Remember, if you do need any technical assistance while using FME, the best starting point is fmepedia.safe.com. From here you can navigate to downloads, examples and documentation, plus also get in touch with the Safe Software support team. That concludes this movie on content transformation with FME. The next section in the DEFME desktop tutorial is data reprojection. On behalf of everyone at Safe Software, thank you for taking the time to view this FME desktop training presentation. We hope it was time well spent for you. If you have further questions, please don't hesitate to contact Safe Software at any of the addresses shown, or look for further technical information at fmepedia.safe.com. Thank you.